Hey there Unmaskers, welcome to my channel Unmask It Now. In the previous episode, we covered the different launch agents that Amazon EC2 supports. Today, we'll start with the introduction to EC2 config. Let's now switch over to the AWS console. I'm currently logged into the Sydney region of my personal AWS account, whose account alias is Unmask It Now. I'm logged in as the IAM user Wiz that has administrator access IAM permissions in this particular account. In the previous episode, we discussed the supported operating systems for the different EC2 launch agents. Since the topic of today's discussion is EC2 config, it's most appropriate to choose a Windows 2012 R2 base image for the purpose of this demo. Let me go ahead and launch a Windows EC2 instance in this region. On the screen, you can see we are currently in the EC2 services dashboard. To launch your instance, click on the launch instances tab. I'm going to provide a name tag for my instance. I'll choose EC2 config. However, you can provide any name tag of your choice. Next, let's select a Windows AMI for the instance. To do so, I'll switch over to the Windows tab in the quick start. By default, the wizard automatically selects the latest operating system for Windows. In this case, it happens to be Windows Server 2022. To switch the image, simply select the drop down and then scroll down to select the Windows 2012 R2 base. You can see that this image is marked as free tier eligible. So if you're following along and have a new AWS account and are still under the free tier access for the first 12 months, you can select this image to work with. So you can remain under the free tier account limits. Next, we'll choose an instance type. I'm going to stick to the default type here, which happens to be T2 Micro and is also a free tier eligible instance type. I will need to associate a key pair when launching this instance so I can decrypt the local administrator password that will then be used for RDP login. To do so, I'm going to click on the Create a New Pair tab. The scope of an EC2 key pair is within the region in an AWS account which means that you can reuse the same key pair when launching other instances in the same region in this particular account. As a result, I tend to generally give the region name same as the region where I'm going to launch the EC2 instance so that it's easy to identify and I don't end up having to create too many key pairs in a particular region. This is just a great tip, but of course, you could always follow along with your own naming conventions as you'd like. So let me go ahead and just type in the key pair. I'm going to give the key pair, like I said, same as that of my region. I'm going to leave the key pair format as the default. So let me go and click create a key pair. As you can see, when I clicked on the create key pair, it actually creates a key pair and it downloads the key pair file, which you can then find in the download section on your local machine. Let's scroll down to the network settings. Coming to the network settings, I'll leave it as default. So we are choosing to launch the instance in the default VPC and subnet. I will, however, create a new security group for this instance. To do so, make sure you have selected the Create Security Group tab. Another great tip is that the default RDP rule allows all sources over the internet to access your instances. As a best practice and not to be a victim of any brute force attacks and to make sure that you have secured your instances access, I do recommend that you change the source of the default RDP ingress rule to your local machine's public IP by clicking on the drop down and selecting my IP. Your local machine will be the machine from where you intend to log into your EC2 instance. I'll leave the storage options as default. I will quickly switch over to the right, verify in the summary tab that all the details selected are accurate, and then go ahead to click on launch instance. The screen upon successful launch will prompt the instance ID. So you can go ahead and click the instance ID. It takes you back to the EC2 console page where you can see the instance launch. Before we can log into the instance, make sure that the instance state is running and also the status checks have passed. Let me go ahead and refresh the screen. You can see that the status checks are still initializing. So let's wait for a bit. 
I did give it a couple of minutes and now you can see that the instant state is reported as running and the status checks have passed with the two by two checks passed, right? Now the instance is ready for login. Another quick check that I also do is to make sure that the instant screenshot shows a control alt del screen. Select the instance, click on the actions tab and then click on monitor and troubleshoot and then click on get instant screenshot. You can see that the screenshot is loaded. It shows the control alt del screen which indicates that the instance is successfully booted and it is ready for login. Let's proceed now to cancel from the screen and log into the instance. In order to log into the Windows instance, you need to make sure you have installed a remote desktop application on your local machine. I'm using a Mac, so I've already installed the free Microsoft remote desktop application from the Apple App Store. Let me go ahead and now log into my Windows instance that I just launched. To do so, I'm going to launch the Microsoft Remote Desktop application on my Mac and click on Add PC. In the PC name, I need to provide the public IPv4 address of my instance. To do so, let me switch over to the console. And with the instance selected, I'm going to go to the Details tab and click on the Public IPv4 address tab and copy the public IP. Under the PC name, I'm just going to go ahead and paste the public IP. Under the user account, I'm just going to leave that as ask when required. So it will prompt me for the user credentials. In the friendly name, I tend to usually give the name tag same as the instance. To log into the instance, let's double click on this widget. It will prompt you for the user credentials. By default for Windows instances, the username will be administrator. For the password, we need to switch over to the EC2 console and then decrypt the password. Select the instance. You can either click on the connect tab here or you can click on actions and then connect. Switch over to the RDP client and then under the password, click on get password. Here you will need to upload the private key file that was previously downloaded when we launched the instance. In my case, it happens to be in the download sections where the file name is Sydney. Click on open and then click on decrypt password. Once you have the password, copy the password, cancel this page, switch over to the Microsoft Remote Desktop application, and then paste the password. Then click on continue to log into the instance. You will receive a prompt that says that the certificate could not be verified back to a root certificate. This is fine because the RDP certificate that is generated for the EC2 Windows instances happens to be self-signed. You can proceed to go ahead and log into the instance. The first thing you can do once you are logged into the instance is to verify the operating system version. In this particular case, you can see that the wallpaper says Windows Server 2012 R2, but that is not the best way to judge that. In order to do so, click on the Start tab and then type in WinWork. You can see that the operating system is a Windows Server 2012 R2. It also happens to be the standard edition of the operating system. And you can see that the product is licensed under EC2 by Amazon.com. So it is licensed by Amazon Web Services. This indicates that the license for Windows for this particular instance is included in the running cost of the instance. And you do not have to explicitly pay for the Windows licenses. Let's exit from that. Now that we have verified the operating system of the instance and that it is running Windows Server 2012 R2, we know that by default the EC2 config service is installed. Let's just verify that. In order to do so, let's click on the Start tab, then click on appwiz.cpl. This command is basically a shortcut for the Program and Features tab. As you can see here that EC2 config service is installed by the publisher Amazon Web Services. You can also see the version of EC2 config that is installed. In this particular case, you can see that the version is 4.9.4588.0. You can always compare this version of EC2 config against the versions of EC2 config that are available. To do so, let's search for EC2 config version history and click on this tab. You can see that the version of EC2 config that is installed on the Windows instance is 4.9.4588. It happens to be one version 
below the latest version of EC2 config. This is because this version of EC2 config was released on 31st May 2022. The AMI that we used for the instance was released on 10-11-2022. However, the latest version happens to be released on 16th November 2022. Since the latest version of EC2 config was released after the AMI release date, you will not see the latest version of EC2 config installed in that particular AMI release. In this particular case, we are only one version behind the publicly available latest version of EC2 config. It is recommended to always keep the EC2 config version up to date on your Windows instances. You can do so by manually updating the version or using an AWS service such as AWS Systems Manager to automate the EC2 config updates. You can expect an upcoming video from me where I will cover how to do EC2 config updates. Let's now switch back to the Windows instance. Let me close this tab. EC2 config service runs as a Windows service under the local system account. Let's look at that. To do so, click on the services tab. You can see the list of all the Windows services. Scroll down or search to find EC2 config. You can see that the EC2 config runs as a Windows service. It is currently in the running state and its startup type is set to automatic, which means the EC2 config service launches or runs as soon as the instance boots. You can also see that the logon type is the local system account. Like any other Windows service, you can stop or restart the EC2 config service. You can also delete as well as uninstall the EC2 config service like I covered in my previous video, EC2 config is an optional service, but it does come by default on supported operating systems. Let me go ahead and close this tab. Next, we'll take a look at the directory where the files related to EC2 config are stored. To do so, click on the Windows Explorer, navigate to C drive, program files, Amazon, and then EC2 config service. This location contains all the files related to EC2 config. We will cover this in more detail in some of the upcoming videos. Lastly, what I also wanted to cover is EC2 config service settings is also GUI based and you can find that from the start menu when you click on EC2 config service settings. We'll look at how to control some of these settings in the later videos. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you got a good introduction to EC2 config. For more such content, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Unmask It Now. See you next time.